Four days out of New York, south by east on a palatial modern steamer. Entering St. Thomas Harbor in the midst of the Virgin Islands, so rich in pirate lore, where ghost ships of swashbuckling cutthroats laden with captives and booty still idle on the blue waters of the Caribbean. We've come from the open sea to a dock some distance from the town, steering the same course as did Sir Henry Morgan, Teach, Bluebeard, and their like, through a narrow channel which would still try the patience of our skipper were he powered by sail and not by steam. There's a choice of autos or motorboats to take us from the landing dock to the town proper. We choose the boat which allows us to view the colorful buildings as we glide across the still... It's but a short walk to the main street. If you insist on riding, however, this patient little animal will accommodate you if you've crossed his master's pound with silver. Sister, you fooled him with that broad-brimmed hat he thought you hailed from the wide open spaces of the wild and woolly west. Now he must think you're from Boston. To the right, Emancipation Park, supposed to be the place where in 1848 the proclamation freeing the slaves in the Danish West Indies was read to the multitude. Just beyond, the Grand Hotel, from which one may view life in the lower town or the government colony on the hills in the background. Visiting friends in St. Thomas is often a task as well as a pleasure. Many of the streets seem like endless stairways, sometimes flights with as many as 100 steps. The influence of the old world in the front yard of the new. Everything's all right as you approach St. Thomas, but it's all left the moment you land. Traffic signs or police will change your walking or driving habits of a lifetime within a few minutes. And if by any chance you're looking for a particular address, you'll find that your English or even high school French is of no assistance as the markers are still in the language of old Denmark from whom the United States purchased the islands in 1917. Open drains lead water from torrential rains from the hills to the sea. The hills were denuded of trees by early colonizers who mistakenly associated them with disease then prevalent on the island. In all tropical countries, the native marketplaces offer much that is of interest to the visitor who will arise in the early hours of the morning and search it out. They're a pleasant, colorful, educational exhibit of the manners and customs of the people. In St. Thomas, one finds spread the produce of not only this island, but of island communities nearby. There's a true cross-section of the people themselves, the bickering and bantering of the buyer and seller, the chit and chatter of local gossip, and it's in an English that is decidedly English. Fruits the whole world knows as tropical, like the coconut and the banana, but a lot of others many never see, like the guava, the papaya, and the sapodilla. This little native maid has come to market on four legs instead of two. The cooperative store down near the wharf sells native handicraft articles and specialties which range from woven hats, bags, and so on, to guavas preserved in rum and packaged in colorful containers. Truly French creations for many of the woven hats and bags are made by the wives and daughters of French fishermen. Styles may come and styles may go, but if you visit St. Thomas for any length of time, you'll probably find yourself wearing one of these light, colorful, and comfortable chapeaux. A vast assortment in size, weave, and color to suit any taste or type of beauty. How do you like this one? St. Thomas is a port of call for the giant airliners en route from the north to Central and South America. This modern influence has left its mark on the community through the naming of one of its large contiguous bodies of water, Lindbergh Bay, in honor of the illustrious flying colonel who landed there on his goodwill trip to South America. One is apt to think of ocean bathing in tropical waters as a hazardous sport, but even the tiny tots are safe in the surf at St. Thomas. It is claimed that attacks by sharks or other vicious denizens of the deep are unknown there. Protective reefs well off the shores of the island, which these ocean marauders fear to pass, are said to be the reason. Conveniently located in an important southern ocean lane, 
St. Thomas has for centuries attracted vessels which stopped there to take on supplies, reship their cargoes, or refuel. No coal is mined on the island. It's brought there from far distant points. But the refueling of modern steamers is an important activity among the natives. Native men and women, and the women are not in the minority, add to their incomes by performing the arduous physical tasks incident to coaling the ships. A new load of coal for a modern ship runs into the thousands of tons, and in St. Thomas, it all goes into the bunkers by way of these little baskets, each one of which holds 60 pounds. Payment for the labor is at the rate of about one and one-half cents a basket. Ship's officers hand a token to each loader passing with a full basket. The loader later redeems this for cash. A daily wage worthy of the name according to any standard of living can only result from almost endless round trips between the coal pile and the bunkers with a stiff haul up the cleated gangplanks as an important hazard. It's the tropics, and it's not uncommon for a thoughtful husband to carry his wife's empty basket back to the coal pile for refilling. High in the hills, one finds a seat which commemorates the activities of Sir Francis Drake. He was, you will recall, the heroic British adventurer, explorer, privateer, and admiral, whose vast and maybe legendary wealth still provides the basis for numerous get-rich-quick promotions. The seat looks down on Maggins Bay and out over a broad expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. Drake and others sailed their vessels in these difficult waters. In the light of the problems presented because of tide and wind, present-day sailors regard this performance as quite a nautical feat. On the south side of the island, facing the Caribbean, the visitor finds enjoyment in the modernly appointed Bluebeard's Castle Hotel an interesting union of the old days of romance and the present demand for effect creature comfort. The hotel is a development of a Simon Pure pirate castle named for its most colorful owner, Edouard de la Barbe Bleu. Not the blue beard who killed so many wives, but another hardy buccaneer so named because his beard is said to have had a tinge of blue. Bluebeard chose the spot as a lookout, possibly for vessels he might attack. We climb the hill to look in on a remaining page of the history of a romantic, if not a glorious age. From the hotel veranda, the quaint town of St. Thomas encircling the harbor below immediately impresses one with the characteristic of the sturdy Danes who developed it centuries ago. The harbor is almost completely landlocked, a safe refuge in time of storm. Within the past few years, there has been a marked increase in the popularity of St. Thomas as a tourist resort. It is now an American possession, distinctively tropical in appearance and customs, and it's easily reached by fast steamships from America's largest centers of population. The comforts of the old Castle Hotel have had a great deal to do with the development of this popularity. The spacious landscaped grounds include broad terraces lined with palm and mahogany trees, which afford cooling shade in which to linger for rest and refreshment while enjoying an absolutely unforgettable view. Let's watch carefully and see what excites the interest of these ladies. Aha, uh -huh, the bottles tell the story, and it's a story told few other places in the world. There's a famous drink in the Virgin Islands they call a swizzle, you take a little of this, a little of that, and so on, almost ad infinitum, including lime, sugar, ice, and water. The most popular dispensing agents seem to be a combination of scientific chemist and engineers, so precise is their sense of quantity, and so expert their manipulative ability. Ja, das ist ein Schwizzelstick. The business end goes into the assorted liquids in the pitcher, the other end between the palms of the hands. It's rotated fast and long. How long, if you should happen to attempt the job yourself, can only be determined by your power of endurance and your power to resist thirst. But if I haven't been intoxicated by the attendant atmosphere, I seem to remember but two ladies at the table. And ladies, nine swizzles is a large order on any man's island. We're moving on, possibly to many other interesting ports along the Spanish main, where the tropical sun beats down and the tempering trade winds still blow. But we'll always remember quaint, curious old St. Thomas and the beautiful harbor that saw us come and go. We've seen and been entranced by the gem of the Caribbean. <laughs> 